I would like to thank CERM for the opportunity to speak and share uh, the research that we'll be presenting and that we got funding for. Um, we will be studying the diversity of COVID-19 lung disease and variable treatment options in a uh, diverse population of stem cell induced lung tissue organoids. COVID-19 disproportionately affects people of color and minority groups. There is ample evidence uh, clinically in the hospital system as well as the rates of infection. Black, Indigenous, and people of color experience more severe symptoms and complications from COVID-19, which is caused by the virus SARS-CoV-2. This is seen in hospitalizations and specifically in the lung disease acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. There have been large clinical treatment trials that aim to treat this disease in the hospital, but these treatment trials have mainly been done in uh, large academic centers and lack diversity. There's been two remdesivir trials and one had only included 20% people of color, while the other one actually included even less so. And therefore these trials really target only one isolated population of uh, people and therefore we don't really know whether it has the same effects on um, uh, various uh, races, ethnicities, as well as genders. In order to be able to replicate not only the infection of SARS-CoV-2 in a lung tissue organoid system, we can utilize human lung in vitro model systems in order to study the effects of the infection, not only on epithelial lung tissue, but also on the endothelial cells and the immune cells inherent within the lung tissue. But not only that, if we have a human lung in vitro model system, we can also choose various genders, ethnicities, as well as HLA types to then be able to determine uh, the effects of the infection and then hopefully utilize repurposed drugs in the setting of those different genders, ethnicities, and HLA types. We aim to utilize induced pluripotent stem cell derived 3D lung tissue organoids to represent a patient specific platform. So here we have a schematic that shows what we aim to do um, for our grant for the next year. There are uh, multiple published lung differentiation protocols that we're utilizing as well as our own. And what the workflow is, is isolating somatic cells from populations um, of various genders and diverse ethnicities, uh, cultivate them in a dish, add reprogramming factors to then reprogram them into fully functional induced pluripotent stem cells, and then add small molecules and growth factors to push the pluripotent stem cells into three-dimensional lung organoids, endothelial cells, and immune cells. And then finally, using these co-cultured lung tissue in vitro um, models, we can then push them through a high throughput mechanism to determine drug treatment options. So this is a schematic of our directed differentiation into multicellular 3D lung organoids. So these are just the isolated 3D lung organoids. We start with our stem cell population and then push them towards an endodermal germ layer, going through the definitive endoderm, anterior foregut endoderm, and the lung progenitor or ventralized anterior foregut endoderm. And this is all done in a monolayer. And then finally, we push them into actual lung organoids by passaging them into 3D trans well with matrigel in them. What we're also able to do, and that's very innovative and novel, is actually direct the differentiation of these lung organoids into three different populations. We can add variable small molecules and growth factors to push them into a more upper airway or a proximal lung phenotype, a more parenchymal or alveolar distal lung phenotype, or a combination of both and to represent an entire whole lung phenotype. These are schemata of um, different um, phase contrast images of the various uh, lung tissue cells that we can make. Here we show a bright field of the proximal lung organoids that we can derive. Here is a uh, schemata of uh, an NKX2-1 GFP receptor phenotype, which uh, indicates a more distal alveolar type. And here we actually have a video of the whole lung um, 24 hours after the addition of a DCI cocktail or dexamethasone cyclic AMP and isobutyl xanthine, which actually causes these branching organoids to start to fully mature and become more of these um, sphere-like organoids. 
Uh, what we are also aiming to do is to co-culture these lung organoids with isogenic pluripotent stem cell derived endothelial and macrophage cells. Here in the Snyder lab, uh, they've already devised a, a routine protocol that um, targets iPSCs into CD31 and lectin expressing uh, vascular three-dimensional endothelial cells. And with a collaborator at SBP, we are also able to differentiate iPSCs into macrophages and co-culture them with the lung organoids here seen in red. Finally, um, after we have derived these isogenic lung tissue organoids, we aim to utilize high throughput drug screening to assess um, cytotoxicity from SARS-CoV-2 infection. And this is done in collaboration with Dr. Sumachanda, who has published a screen of over 12,000 late stage, clinical stage, or FDA approved drugs, or his reframe study. Um, his primary screen actually utilized immortalized cell lines and not only human ones, but also uh, kidney monkey ones. And therefore we aim to uh, utilize a more clinically relevant human lung system in order to fast track promising drugs to patients. And these will not only incorporate um, epithelial and mesenchymal um, cell populations, which we have in our lung organoids, but also incorporate the endothelial and immune populations as well. And finally, as I introduced in the background, these must include a diversity of genders and ethnicities in order to truly understand the effects of not only SARS-CoV-2 on lung tissue, but also the effects of the different therapeutic options that we will be trialing. So this is our project timeline in a Gantt chart. And uh, just to split it up quickly and then go into more detail, um, we're going to utilize, uh, we're initially going to differentiate the iPSCs into lungs, macrophages, and vasculature, characterize them. Then we're going to get baseline molecular characterization using single cell RNA-seq and cytokine proteomics. Finally, we're going to infect them with both the SARS-CoV-2 pseudotype spike and the authentic live virus. And then we'll determine the efficacy of two uh, protease inhibitors that we have determined may be important in reducing cytotoxicity from these viruses. This is our panel of the various iPSC-derived organoids that we'll be utilizing. We will be obtaining male and female iPSCs from Caucasian, African-American, and Latinx populations, as well as the HLA B4601 type in uh, collaboration with Dr. Maria Bettinotti. So milestone one, we have obtained the iPSCs from the table that I've just presented. We have been differentiating them into 3D lung organoids, as well as endothelial cells. We're starting to differentiate them into alveolar macrophages, and we are starting to characterize the cell populations. Here's a schematic of our co-culture systems with our lung organoids expressed with cytotracker red and the endothelial cells tagged with cytotracker green. And you could see here that they're co-localizing nicely in a three-dimensional conformation in Matrigel. And they're probably even secreting a little bit of mucus or surfactant, which is kind of nice. Milestone two is to determine the baseline molecular characterization using single cell RNA-seq and proteomics. And we have already done this with our proximal um, lung organoid system. We have performed single cell RNA-seq and um, we will be performing uh, these same types of uh, experiments in collaboration with uh, Dr. Jean Yao and uh, the proteomics with Dr. Carl Ware. Milestone three, we'll be infecting our lung tissue organoids with SARS-CoV-2 pseudotype and authentic virus. Uh, here we show our preliminary data with uh, the pseudotype virus, which also is expressing GFP once it enters the cell and infects. And you can see it infects our organoids in the three-dimensional formation, as well as the monolayer in a lower and higher magnification. And here we show that the virus is targeting goblet cells, uh, which express MUC5AC, and definitely targets the ACE2 receptor. But what's interesting is we're also finding that SARS-CoV-2 pseudotype virus can also infect cells that in fact do not express the ACE2 receptor. And that's why it's important to study medications and compounds that may not actually utilize the Tempris-2 ACE2 receptor um, entrance. Finally, this is our data for uh, infecting our lung organoids with authentic live virus. I do have BSL-3 access and have been infecting the lung organoids with the live virus. Uh, here we see our intact whole lung organoids infect by showing positivity for spike as well as nucleocapsid, as well as our proximal lung organoids, also our positive population. We have determined the most uh, infective MOI. And finally, we've also run some compounds just to show that these uh, lung organoids can in fact be 
infected and show um, a response to various treatment options. Milestone four will determine the action and efficacy of one of the protease inhibitors, ONO5334. This is a potent non-lysosomotropic inhibitor of cathepsin K protease. Its initial use was in a phase two trial in menopausal women, and it was used in oral doses, which is uh, preferred over IV, and uh, initially utilized for inhibiting osteoporosis. It inhibits viral entry and viral enzymes that destroy connective tissue in the interstitial matrix, and therefore it may actually protect alveolar and bronchial lung epithelium. And here we show our preliminary data using the pseudotyped virus, um, along with treatment with ONO5334, and uh, a negative and a positive control of DMSO and remdesivir, and showing that it does actually decrease infectivity. Finally, milestone five will be to assess the action and efficacy of another protease inhibitor, VBYH25. This is more of a pan-cathepsin protease inhibitor, and it has been already tested for toxicity and efficacy in multiple preclinical models. And its initial indication for use was for autoimmune disorders, which actually may be effective against the immune and inflammatory responses triggered by SARS-CoV-2, which is why it's important to actually have an immune cell within the modeling system. Finally, milestone six, if everything goes well and according to plan and milestones four and five suggest efficacy, then we can actually schedule an interact or pre-IND meeting for the two um, different molecules. Um, and we're already in a co collaborating with IQVIA in order to make sure that this process is seamless. And then hopefully um, our work um, and our model system will then be able to lead towards clinical trials utilizing these uh, molecules. So in conclusion, using lung uh, tissue organoid co-cultures to dis study disease disparity from COVID-19 is extremely important and um, also uh, allows um, feasibility and facility by utilizing patient-specific lines, including those of different genders, ethnicities, and HLA types, and utilizing uh, the different cells from the same isogenic uh, pluripotent stem cells, which retains that population's genetics as well as epigenetics. Um, we can also mimic the human organ in a dish, and instead of awaiting uh, lung biopsies from donors, we can have an infinite supply that we can continue to differentiate, passage, as well as cryopreserve. And here again is our panel of the iPSC-derived organoids that we will be differentiating and uh, co-culturing. Finally, if uh, genetics is not uh, the reason for disparity and it's more of an environmental or epigenetic phenomenon, we can actually expose these lung tissue uh, organoids to either nicotine or vaping, and that's in collaboration with our um, uh, with a lab that studies lung cancer in the setting of uh, smoking and tobacco. And we can actually study various environmental factors to determine if they are the cause for worse outcomes. And finally, the use for drug screening in our lung organoid model is great because you can actually avoid the animal model as we know, all know that there are multiple drugs that may be efficacious in animals, but then ultimately fail in large human clinical trials. We can directly test human cells for effect, and human cells are um, important because they're the ones that express the different receptors and entry points for the virus that may not actually be utilizing specific receptors that uh, animals may not have. And finally, patient-specific treatment regimes, as we've talked about before. So I just want to acknowledge Dr. Evan Snyder, who's the PI on this grant, as well as um, the grad students, postdocs, and uh, research assistants in the lab who are helping with all the differentiation and uh, infections, as well as all of our collaborators, and of course, the funding from CIRM. Thank you. Mm -hmm.